Hello and welcome to the Stuff and Such channel. Today I'll be showing you how I kill some rabbits. Stay tuned. So my rabbits are my pets. They're treated good every day of their lives. I find that food raised with love tastes better. They've never known a moment of fear or stress until this very end. And as such, they're calm and happy and the meat is tender and tasty. And I know everything that's gone into every single one of these animals. So with rabbits, you start by breaking their necks. This is done with just a foot to the back of the head and then you lift them up by their back feet, stretching out the neck and they're paralyzed and dead within seconds. I like to do two at a time just seems to make it easier for me. All right, off to the butchering station. Now, since their necks are nice and stretched, it's really easy to remove the heads. Start with the head. And then the front feet. Grab by the shoulder and it kind of shoves it forward. That way your fingers aren't near your ax and you're not potentially removing a hand. Back legs, you try to get just behind this joint. There isn't really any meat on that end of the feet and this makes it much easier when skinning time comes. So I've got my little selection of knives here. I'm not sure if you can see them. This is my favorite and most versatile. It's actually a skinning knife. So it comes in really handy here. So you start at the back legs, you stick it in and just slide along the leg. Or this is how I do it anyway. Then your legs are started. So then you kind of just start peeling it like you're peeling off a really tight sock. Once your fingers are through, and you have kind of a booty, you can pull it off the end of the foot here. That did not peel well, of course. It's done it perfectly all day until now. So you just remove that little extra foot. <laughs> Doesn't need to be there. other leg. Can you imagine none of this is actually recording? I've hit the button somewhere along the way. It's a possibility. I'm not exactly comfortable behind the camera here. There we go. Legs are out. Now you slide your hand on through, kind of peeling the skin from the meat. Pull it a bit so you kind of got a purse handle there. And then knife on in and cut through. This rabbit is an angora. It's got this really kind of sheep-like wool instead of the normal fluffy fur like the guy here. This is a female, the one over there is a male. Now my hand is through the back. And that's where this heavy knife comes in. It's been around here for ages, no idea where it came from, but it's heavy duty, 
and great for cutting through bones. So for this back section here, you're cutting through the tail. And then just removing from the back here. Now all of this will end up needing washed because, you know, it's covered in hairs. All right. Now, the fun part. It just peels right off. All right, let's see if I can turn you here. Like I said, I am no expert. All right, so are you in the camera? You just step on the fur and peel it off. Easy as that. Back again to my bone cutting knife. So you cut through the pelvis here, break those bones up, and then back to this one. Sharp, versatile knife. And just up through there. And then all of the insides will just fall out and into the bucket. Then you just pull it out, and that's lungs and heart there. And there he is, done. Rinse him off before we bag him, obviously. And then this one. So these guys are about 10 weeks old. They're nice young rabbits, so the skin cuts really easily yet. And they're much easier to peel and clean. The older they get, the more difficult it gets. The skin gets really tough and it doesn't like to come off. So I have two more to kill today and then I'm done. I've already put six in the freezer. The rest of them are too young yet. Hey, dragonfly. I don't know if you've ever heard the saying that a dragonfly is a past loved one visiting. I don't really believe in all that Whenever I see one, I'm reminded of the one we lost. She wouldn't want us hanging on to the old memories and anger or any other thing. But it's nice now just to get the little reminder. This is my little knife. It doesn't really have much of a place here. However, it's nice just for those little cuts that you don't want to jam the giant one in. You know, possibly lose a finger or something. It's always a concern. get pretty particular about a certain direction. You kind of get used to it, doing it one way or another. For me, I always like to cut this way. Since 
since I've done it enough times, my fingers just know where to go to get out of the way of the big hacking blade. Now this is a male, so it's a little trickier. It's still young enough yet that testicles aren't much of a problem. However, as they get older, they do get to be more difficult to remove. All right, back over here and down. Where are we? And peel them like a sock. bucket and up and over. Alright. That's a testy there. that before then you can just empty it out and get rid of the butt and everything as you dump it into the bucket here all your intestines and everything just fall out and into the bucket And that concludes today's little episode of Stuff and Such. I hope you found the video today informative and educational, gave you a little insight as to where the food that you eat comes from. And here's just a little bit of bunny cuteness to close out our day. Is he not the cutest little thing you ever did see? All right, have a good one, guys.